Hi, Ben Atkinson here, author and director of HolyClubs.com. Ordinary people called to do extraordinary things. That's who I am. I'm just an ordinary person, and by the mercy and grace of God, I'm called to do extraordinary things. I'm called to live a life of holiness. It's God's first plan for me, and it's His first plan for you. However, when God told me to live holy, I didn't necessarily feel holy. Therefore, I had to begin to walk out. How do I do this? Kind of like going to the gym. What are the ways I can succeed? For me in my own life, I want to set myself up for success and not failure. And so therefore I said, Lord, where in the scripture can I go out and learn this so that I can grow in knowing who you are? Today we're on firm foundations number three. You should have this in your in your booklet. Um, and here we're learning, we're praying up in and out so we're going to learn the goal today is really to grow your prayer life to learn to pray um, in what i believe is a biblical way and i'm gonna hopefully prove that to you not only a biblical way but a heavenly way how they do things in heaven you know we're praying the our father jesus taught us to pray our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And, and I'm going to be teaching you back and forth, back and forth, how I believe the Our Father is one of the most powerful... Uh, scriptures that we need to be going after the prayer of our father is really foundational as far as bringing the old and new testament together how we need to pray and i want to teach you how to pray this up in and out and we're going to end with going after luke 11 here and understanding the our father at the end of this it's very important so if you're either you're watching this video because either you're number one you're just curious or number two you've got your firm foundations you're going through this by yourself you're sitting there saying i want to learn this and then you're going to spend time on the talk to god or the meditation at the end or maybe you're getting prepared you're a teacher you're getting prepared to to uh teach your group and and i want to encourage you if you've never taught before just take these truths Learn them. Make it your own. I've got the she, the she here, the notes. It should be in your Firm Foundations uh, booklet. But I want to encourage you just to kind of write, jot notes down and learn from this. Take notes from me. Take notes from what the Holy Spirit is telling you. You can pause this video at any time and, and learn from this. But make this your own and turn around and take these truths. Remember, everybody in your group is going to have these. You've got 20 minutes to teach them. If you've never taught before, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Just keep going and learn and teach the best you can. So let's jump right in. First thing on your sheet, it says uh, the scripture verse at the top. And I want to read Hebrews 11, verse 6. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So the first thing we have to do here is believe. And believe is something that we've got to set our heart to do. A lot of times people are, uh, they're not moving forward or they're caught in compromise or they're caught in pain or brokenness. And a lot of this can, be, can come back to, they don't believe that God is who he says he is. We might know conceptually a scripture, but we don't actually believe it. And so I can read a scripture, but I've got to learn to engage with that scripture. And uh, it's important, we would sit down in a coffee shop and spend an hour talking with someone and dialoguing with them and get to know them. In the same way, we want a purpose in our heart to spend time getting to know 
what God already wrote. And so right here, we want to take time to go through these scriptures. We want to learn to believe. We want to engage our faith. And this happens when we begin to, how do we do this? We, we pray, we read, we text. That's why we have on the back of our sheet here, you've got this spot where we're teaching you to take the scripture and then you engage in it and you by meditating by talking to god by texting god and you're believing so this is where we abide in christ we've got to grow up in believing him that he is and he's a rewarder and he is the ultimate reward and abraham said that you are my exceedingly great you are my shield you're my reward and so the reward here is jesus the knowledge of jesus a lot of times we, we think of, of the reward as kind of just winning the lottery and Jesus makes us rich and we sit back and kind of watch TV all day and our life is good. No, we diligently seek to believe and He is the reward. He is what gets us through our hard times. He is what helps us overcome what's been done to us and the sin that we've done. We've done ourselves. We've got to seek the knowledge of God. This is an action. This is hard work harder than any uh, gym i want to encourage you but it's simple it's what we, we we've, we're called to do he also uh, it's also important for us to know that we must guard against unbelief hebrews 3 12 we've really got to guard against unbelief by growing in belief in who god is and by we go after learning, studying the Word, engaging with the Holy Spirit, texting God, spending time getting to know Him. Um, but, you know, in Luke 17, 5, they, they say the guard, we've got to guard our heart. They said, Lord, increase our faith. Help us. We want to pray. We've got to guard against unbelief. And we've got to pray to grow in in belief of who he is i want to mark down here luke 17 5 i want you to go after that i want you to search these scriptures out grow in these scriptures learn these scriptures that i put on here for you you've got to exercise your faith you've got to guard against it okay now next we look at he is a rewarder again we talked about this a little bit but really this is to know god We've got to spend time seeking after him. We've got to know him and we believe him. And as we seek him out, he is going to reward us. Again, it's not just about us kind of growing rich and getting more TV time and cooler vacations. It's about the knowledge of God. It's about knowing who he is. And I love searching out the scriptures daily daily i want to know more about god when i read the word in the morning before i get up and do anything i go deep in the word of god i want to know more about god and i do this not just by reading but i begin to engage my faith by praying by texting god by dialoguing with him and finding out about who he is i always say this i can read a book about who my wife is or read a book about one of my children or read a book about you however if i sit down with each one of them and talk to them i'm going to get to know them more if i have face-to-face -face communication and especially now in social media where we think we're connected to people but we're not we've got to get face-to-face -face with these people um, i throw back in here um, believe and obey and this is how we engage our faith more this is more of a how how to and first of all the there's passages of scriptures when we're reading through the scriptures there's scriptures where we find out really who god is the knowledge of god and so what we do is we want to stop and we want to pause and i say this when i'm praying i say lord help me believe this let your truth come inside me come inside my mind and renew my mind that i'm a new creation come inside my thought patterns and my speech and my life help me to believe and then god's word these truths will come and they will empower us to grow in love empower us to grow in forgiveness 
His word will be a light, a lamp unto our feet, a light to our path. We want God's truth to transform us. And so I want to engage myself by saying, Lord, help me to believe this. Give me grace to believe this. Now, when I come to a passage that says, I've got to obey, I actually stop and say, Lord, help me obey. Help me obey this scripture. I just pause. And part of my growing in belief and guarding against unbelief is I engage right here by saying, help me to believe help me to obey so i want to help me i i literally just ask him please help me god take me another way in a very important way and something that you may not have ever thought of in the past is right here and it says we want to minister to god and i just want to make this clear um in the Old Testament, when the priests would come before the Lord, they would minister to the Lord. They would sing to the Lord. They would declare praises to the Lord. The people of Israel would do that. But we, we want this to be on earth as it is in heaven. And so what we do is we've got to understand that in heaven, what are they doing right now? What's going on? When we look at this, when we look at the scripture, when you look at Revelation chapter 4 and 5, you get a picture of what's happening in heaven. And I would encourage you, maybe just pause right now if you're a teacher or if you're doing this for yourself, just pause this video and read Revelation 4 and 5. Okay, so hopefully you just read that and you're sitting there going, wow, that is amazing. If you've never read that before, you can see that there's... there. God is the center of it all, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And from that, you know, you've got God in the center around four living creatures. One, two, three, four. They're singing holy, holy, holy. Then you've got 24 elders and you've got mitreds and mitreds of people, of, of, of those heavenly hosts singing and crying out to the Lord. And so this is this is amazing how it's set up, but they're all centered on the Lord. They're, those four living creatures are staring at the holiness of God. They're staring at who He is, what He thinks and feels, the character of God, and they're singing the revelation that they get right back to Him. That's what they're doing. That's how they're ministering to God. They're taking what they've been given from God, and it, and it kind of comes, it goes like this. God shows them who he is and they sing about it. These four living creatures are just worship leaders. They're worship leaders for the 24. They're worship leaders for you and me if we're paying attention. And then these 24 elders, they cast their crowns down and they go, you're worthy, you're awesome. And so, and it just keeps going over and over and over. If one of the four living creatures came to your church, he would not talk about how to feel good, get rich, and grow your life to, and so you can just kind of kick back. They would talk about the holiness of God. They would draw you into the holiness of God because that's all they do. And they choose to be here. These four living creatures aren't slaves. They could be anywhere. They have the choice. And so do you and so do I. And they choose to gaze upon the holiness of the Lord. They conform, they're growing in the knowledge of God. So I want to encourage you. What you're doing is, I hope you get this. How do we grow in belief? How do we guard against unbelief? We've got to engage with the knowledge of God. We've got to know that He's going to reward us with the knowledge of God. We've got to set our heart to believe and obey. We cry out. We ask, Lord, help me to believe. Help me to obey. And then we take the revelation we've been given. Remember, back here, we're going to get revelation. I'm going to teach you in a minute how to do that. And then we'll take that revelation and we're going to minister it back to God. And again, this is, we want to give all glory, honor. This is how the, I'm going to actually talk about it in Luke chapter 11. It says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name or holy is your name. Really, this is the same thing as the four living creatures. They're looking at God and they're declaring back to God who He is. They're ministering to God. So in Luke 11, the Our Father in Heaven, it's Jesus says, pray this way. First, 
take time to minister to God. I bet you never thought it like that. You kind of just said it, thought the Our Father was something you get through. No, 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 no. The first thing is to learn to minister to God, which is actually praying up. And we're going to teach you to do that in just a moment. But I want you to just hit this further. David, Psalm 27, 4. If you don't know this, you've got to know it where it says, David says, one thing I desire, that which I seek, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, just like these four living creatures, gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and inquire. He wanted to do these two things. He wanted to gaze at God's beauty and then he wanted to inquire. He wanted to grow in the knowledge of God. These are such two very, very, very important parts. This has to be instrumental in your life because what are you gazing at? Are you gazing at other people's social media posts who are there not even telling the truth about their life? Or are you gazing at God? You've got to take time to gaze at God. If you're in a place of compromise or you're in a place of woundedness, you've got to take time to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and stop gazing on everything else. Gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Psalm 29 says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We've got to see his beauty. David understood that. I've got to do this. He had some issues. He had some problems. But he overcame those by coming back to the Lord, telling him he was sorry. But he also not only gazed, he got to, he inquired. He wanted to know more and more about who God was. And it's important for us to know, I want to see your beauty. I want to gaze at you. And I want to inquire more and more. And this is what the four living creatures are doing. And then David turned everything back around in song to the Lord. We're going to teach you how to do that right now. So let's get ready. All right. We want to pray up, in, and out. So again, this is heavenly. This is how we're doing it in heaven. This is how we're learning to believe, guarding against unbelief. So first of all, on your sheet, it should say, what does this show me about who you, God, are? It's important to know that who God is, is he, um, again, when we're in the up section, we want to look at this and we're going to learn to pray up, in, and out. And what I mean by this is the four living creatures, they're praying up. We want to minister to the Lord. We want to tell him who he is. We want to pray in. We want to pray in our hearts. We want to get that in our hearts. We want the truth of what God Remember, on the sheet it says, what does this verse show me about what you, God, think about me and feel about me? So we want that truth to come into our heart. We want that to be a seed. We want the revelation that God gives us to be our, a seed that goes into our heart and bears forth fruit that touches our lives and touches those around us. And then out, we want to learn to pray for our neighbor. And Luke 11 obviously follows through with that. But let's, let's start here by praying up. As you grow in belief, you've got to diligently seek after the beauty of God, the in, in knowledge of God, and declare. You've got to then declare the truth. A lot of times we get revelation, but what do we do with it? And so um, the world gets revelation of different things, and it can be compromised, and they turn it around into song, and then it goes viral, and, and it infects people. I'm, I'm doing a wordplay there. And, but we have got to get the knowledge of God inside of us. Songwriters, creative writers, those of you who are called for novels and creativity and dance, you've got to get the seed of the word of revelation in you and then bring that forth in creative expressions, in playwrights, songwriting, uh, different things to transform the communities around you. But you do, you've got to be at first a priest before the Lord, this person who takes the revelation and turns it back around in prayer. Does that make sense? And so you've got to, your ministry to God will allow you to increase your heart and the atmosphere around your city. It'll infect you. It'll, it'll, it'll begin to be an overflow. Your creativity will overflow with who God is. Um, God, Psalm 22, 3. I want you to encourage you to stop right now and look that up. You can, uh, just go through it. Uh, but what it's saying here is that as we're singing, God's enthroned in the praises of his people. As you are ministering to the Lord, it's a, it's a canopy of his love over your home, over your community. 
Um, God en- enjoys your devotion. You move his heart. When you minister to him, he rewards you with more and more of who he is. And I usually just say when I'm, again, the question we're asking in our uh, time on the sheet is what does this scripture show me about who you, God, are? Again, this is how we're forcing ourselves to inquire on the on the beauty and the knowledge of God. Does that make sense? This question is linked to beauty and knowledge. Because remember, this whole thing is about how you're going to grow in holiness, right? How you're going to walk in holy before the Lord. So as you see who he is, you can then see who you're supposed to become. Does that make sense? I want you to get that. As you look at him, you're going to see that he's beautiful, see that he's knowledge. That's who he is. His character, his knowledge is his holiness. And this is who he is calling you to be. So you get a big picture of he has a high vision for you. Next, um, what we want to do. So we're going to get, remember, we get our builder sentence. We get our summary here uh, when we're doing this. And then we're going to, that is, becomes what we're going to do after we take time meditating on this and talking to God we'll get like a builder sentence here at the end and that's what we're going to turn back around in prayer and what I do is for I've given you an example of how I help me believe and guard against unbelief I say this I said Lord help me believe give me revelation of this part of who you are Help me know. And then I give you a phrase here of what I said. Maybe I've been texting God on on, on who he is. And I go, you are, and this is the builder sentence I come up with. You are holy. You are holy. You're holy. You're the Lord God Almighty. And then I want to thank him. I just say, thank you, God. You're the holy God. As I'm thanking him, I'm enforcing believing and I'm guarding against unbelief but I'm also ministering to him it actually touches his heart it makes him feel good and it helps me believe it's really both and and so as I'm going through this thank you help me to believe give me more revelation and I want this to be how you do things we just want to say thank you help me to believe give me more And as you're doing this, what you're doing is you're setting yourself before the Lord. You're engaging in belief. You're guarding against unbelief. And uh, in, what does this first show me about who you are? What you, who you God, what you God think about me? What he thinks about me? And I added feel because it's important to know that he feels emotions for us. So we see his beauty. We see his knowledge. And then we want to know what he thinks and feels about us. And this is this section here. So we're taking the scripture that we're starting with. We're getting revelation. We're learning to believe. But now we're at this place where, okay, I know who you are. Now tell me what you think and feel about me. This is intimate. This drives home the different things. And we've got to grow in belief, guard against unbelief by I'm, I'm right here on the sheet and the teaching. We've got to grow in belief as we minister back to God what he thinks about us. I, we're actually going to turn this back around, the revelation we get here. We're going to minister it back to him. We've got to seek the truth about who he is, what he thinks and feels about us. As we do this, as we speak back to him who he is and what he thinks and feels about us, his heart is going to be moved and then he's going to touch our heart and it's really back and forth back and forth and you can see this in in a relationship between a husband and wife as they minister to each other as they tell i love you honey well i love you too her heart has grown if i say this to my wife my heart is affirmed and it's the same thing with my kids i love you i love you too dad and there's this back and forth in the same way we do this happens with god as we minister to him he ministers to us we grow in belief we guard against unbelief and so when he he he's going to tenderly speak back to you and it's so important that's why when when we're this isn't a rush. We go through this and we allow God to speak back to us. And so let's say I'm, I'm still on this phrase of, of meditating on the holiness of God. And my example here in the in section, 
I would say, Lord, help me to believe that you're holy. Help me to love you. You made a way for me to be holy like you. And again, I just turn, thank you for making me holy. Give me more revelation. Help me to believe. Give me more. And then I also want to obey. Remember, we want to obey. So if the Lord's giving you anything that he needs to encourage you with, or just say, Lord, help me obey. Give me strength to obey. Because a lot of times when you're talking to the Lord, the, the problems or issues the enemy tries to share, you know, jump up, your flesh jumps up. And it, Lord, help me overcome. You think this way about me. Help me to overcome. Help me to obey. And then I, ask, I, I also say, and I have this in here, give me strength to obey. Give me your grace, which we're going to go through in Firm Foundation 16, 17, and 18. Don't jump there because I want you to stay in the progression. You've got to stay in the progression. And then how then shall I pray for my neighbor out uh, down here? Jesus, help my neighbor believe and obey you. Um, so you're taking the revelation you get. You're gonna minister. You're gonna meditate up, in, and out. But you're gonna take that revelation and you're gonna turn it back in ministry first to God. Then you're gonna take the revelation and put it in your heart. And then you're gonna take that revelation and pray for your neighbor. This is Luke 11, and I want to encourage you. And I'm gonna go through this time and time again. But the Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. This is all ministering to him. Holy is your name. You're amazing. You're awesome. Your kingdom is the best. Your will be done. And so it's it's upward focused. Does that make sense? And then inward, I it makes me feel our father. What does that make me? It's corporate. It's our father. It's all of us together. So not only do you love you love me as a child. Does he, do you see this? I, oh my gosh, I've got an inheritance. So right in there, he's, he's explaining who he is. He's explaining what he thinks and feels about us. And then we're, give us. This is about our, us. It's about our neighbor. It's about us and our neighbor. Does that make sense? It's corporate. So as you're praying this, you're, you're going up in and out. And you can take that and turn back around in prayer. So again, when you're finished with this, you're going to turn, uh, get to our meditation sheet, our talk to God. And it's about the adopting love of God. We picked for you Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. And it says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And where it says sons, we're, we're, we're sons and daughters. We're children of God. We're also the bride of Christ. So uh, it's important for you to know this is really both and. Don't get tripped up by that. And let's move forward. When we're So remember, you're going to go through the encountering God. It's one, two, three, four. You're going to go through that. Then we get in here and we're going to meditate on God. We're going to, God's going to highlight something in here. For me, as I've gone through this earlier, I was able to go through this. Um, it put in here what I got was He chose us. And I was like, oh man. And the Holy Spirit was just highlighting stuff to me. So what I would do is I would go through here, meditate on who He really is. I would find His beauty and I would find His knowledge. I'll get a builder sentence. Then I would, what do you think and feel about me? And I, I would write that builder sentence right there. How then shall I pray for my neighbor? And what's going to happen? How are we going to do this? If you're in your group, remember, I'm just going to do this real quickly. You should already have known this because you've gone through the, the, the training that we have and how to run a group. But you're going to take this revelation and you're going to pray it up and out. And so I like to do it like this. I like to go around three times. I mean, I'm just giving you a, how I do it. And the first time we pray up. The first time we take our builder revelation that we got 
and we pray it up. So I declare. So the first time around, it may be something like this. If I've meditated the God who chose us in him before the foundation of the world, I would say, you are the one who chose us before earth existed physically. You chose me. I, I, I did this meditation earlier. Um, and, and I would just declare it. Remember, see my language. I'm talking to him. You are I, as if he is in the center of the room. Just like our four living creatures over here. Well, here you all are. Does that make sense? Your group, whether you've got 50 or you got five or what have you, or you got three, maybe you got four, like in heaven. I don't know. But you, the first time around, we declare who he is. We're praying up. Does this make sense? First time around, we're praying up. And we just declare, you are the one who chose us. You don't have to get huge and massive or whatever. You chose us. The next person prays, their builder, the next person, the next person. So the first time around we go, we declare the revelation up. Next time around is what we got in. And as when I meditate on, on the, he chose us, I, I knew that I, I got the revelation that despite my weakness, he went and reached down and grabbed me. He chose me. And so I, I wrote down from my builder when, when I did before, you love me with a never-ending love. And so when we go around the next time, I'm still ministering to him. I'm still declaring to him who he is. And as I'm doing that, I'm growing in belief and I'm guarding against unbelief. Does that make sense? And so I'm telling him, this is who you are. You love me. You care. You're awesome. And you, and then this person goes, and the revelation, and see, what's going to happen is, it's going to start growing, and growing, and growing, and how does that make the Lord feel? As I'm sitting here telling them this, everybody in the room is feeling blessed, but the Lord's going to just bring love back to us. I mean, this is how it goes. It's back and forth, back and forth. God is a, he loves romance. He's so, rom he's amazing. He loves intimacy. He loves his kids. He wants to be with us forever. And so lastly, we're going to go and pray for our neighbor. Our third thing is we take that revelation that we've got and we pray it back for our neighbor. And our, again, our neighbor is who's around us or who we're called to serve. So let's just pray and, and, and may the Lord bless you as you get started in this, in this talking to God time. Father, I pray for our friends that are watching this. I pray that as they, if they're getting ready to teach this or they're getting ready to meditate on it, I pray in Jesus' name, pour out your spirit, break in with power, let them know the adopting love of God. Help them pray up, in, and out. God bless.